Welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Online. And today I'd like to talk about uh, class race and really what are the best classes and races to kind of combine together. And also what are the best races in game just in general. But I want to go ahead and kind of throw this out there. No matter what race you pick, what class you pick, you can still have fun in the game. You can still enjoy the game. You will still get uh, productivity out of those races and classes. And don't ever let anyone tell you different. A lot of people out there that play the game will tell you, oh, you're not. I've seen this on console so much, I'm sure it happens on, on, on PC as well. You're not going to be good enough with that certain race and that certain class because you're not what's considered to be the best uh, you know, race selection for that particular class. And that's necessarily not true. I mean, you can perform with any of these classes, any of these races, as long as you practice a rotation, as long as you get a good build down. But like I said, I'm going to talk about these and kind of give you an idea of what you can use these certain races for. And also kind of give you an idea of what you can use these races for that's not really on, I guess you would consider, the meta of the game. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. The first class we're going to look at here, of course, is going to be the Breton. Now, the Breton gets an increase in base magic, magic recovery, light armor, alliance point gain, spell resistance, cost reduction of spells. This is allowing them to cast spells with little pause. And I will agree with that. Uh, a Breton is very good, especially when you put certain gear on it in-game that gives you cost reduction from spells. You can really just throw out a lot of stuff and not really have to worry about your uh, magic or, you know, whatever character you're using it on. Mainly magic characters, a healer or a DPS kind of magic character. You don't have to worry about those resources just going really low all the time. You're having to worry about using potions, that kind of thing. So I think for a newer player, if you're out there and you're just now starting and you want to make a magic character, or if you're out there and you have played for a while on another character and you said, oh, you know, I want to try something else, a Breton is a very good choice for a magic damage dealer, uh, for a uh, something like a magic uh, healer, uh, whatever the case may be, you can heal with this class, you can damage deal with this class. Now, it may not be the top in what you would consider like the damage tiers. No, it's not going to deal as much damage as some of the other classes, but that reduction in spells, if you're fast enough with your rotation, if you are good enough with your rotation, you will see a big benefit in using a Breton because you can throw out a lot of stuff before you ever run out of resources. So a Breton is a very good character, in my opinion, like I said, for a damage uh, damage dealer for a magic class or even a healer. I, my, my Breton that I use in PvP and I have one in PvE that I heal with is very, very good for both of those, I think. Uh, both of those categories in PvP or PvE because of the ability, like I said, just to spam those uh, casts, that kind of thing. So the next thing we want to talk about is the Red Guard. Now the Red Guard is... Bonuses to shields, base stamina, stamina recovery, movement, and duration effects from food. Uh, this used to be one of the top tier stamina damage dealing classes. Now, while there's some others that have moved ahead of it, I still think a Red Guard is a very good stamina damage dealing class. And keep in mind, a lot of this stuff changes from update to update, year to year. Some races may move up the list in best damage dealing, some may move down. It just depends on how they change up gear, how they change up their passives, how they change up just things in general in the game. It does make some races in the end better than others from time to time. But I still feel that a Red Guard is very good for a stamina damage dealing class, very good for PvE. Uh, you could even use them in PvP, but I think PvE uh, solo play or PvE uh, group play, a Red Guard is still very good. You also could use a Red Guard as a tank. You really can use any of these classes as a tank if you would like. That's what's great about the game. I think that is one thing that a lot of people really enjoy about the Elder Scrolls Online is you can pick any of these races and combine them with any of these classes and not necessarily may not have what a lot of people consider the meta best class in game, best race in game, but you still can do very well with them. So if you're looking at a Red Guard, I, I'd say you could use it for a stamina damage dealer or like I said, you can make a very good tank out of a Red Guard as well. Now when it comes to Orcs, they have the bonus to the heavy armor use, the sprinting weapon damage, inspiration gain, weapon proficiency, as well as a health and stamina kind of base bonus. This will, is what a lot of people consider best in slot for stamina. I use a orc for PvE on my stamina necro and in PvP for my stamina necro. And I really enjoy orcs. I really enjoy the damage that you get from orcs. I like the speed bonus that you get from orcs. Um... I just feel that the Orc is a very good choice for a Stamina Damage Dealer. Now, I also would say a Stamina Damage Dealer or a Tank. You could use an Orc for a Tank as well, if you would like. Because they do get some things that would help in the tanking department. That health and Stamina bonus would be very good. 
But if you're wanting to just go straight up damage with stamina, I think you cannot ever go wrong with an orc as of right now because they are very good at, like I said, PvE and PvP damage dealing. The next thing we're going to talk about is the Dark Elf. You get dual wield ability, flame and lava resistance, weapon and spell damage, and base, magic, and stamina. In my opinion, the Dark Elf and the Khajiit are kind of the jack of all trades. When I look at a Dark Elf, I have a Dark Elf magic character. I think they are very close to dealing as much damage as a High Elf. A couple percentage less, I would say. But overall, a lot of people would not be able to tell the difference in damage between a Dark Elf and a High Elf. The great thing about a Dark Elf, in my opinion, is if you are new to the game and you have not really sure, have, have had an idea, I guess, of what you want to use, if you want to be stamina, if you want to be magic, a Dark Elf is great to pick as kind of your first character or even your second character. Because if you choose a Dark Elf and you decide, I want to make a magic Dark Elf, whether it be a sorcerer or a necro or whatever the case may be, then you decide later on, you know what, I think I want to go with a stamina style character. So if you have a sorcerer or Dark Elf, you can make it a stam sork. If you have a um, a magic warden that's a dark elf you can make it a stam warden kind of the same with necro and kind of so on down the list as you can tell a dark elf is really good to kind of swap up between magic and stamina uh, based damage also a dark elf is a very good tank in my opinion you can even make it a healer so like i said they're kind of the jack of all trades and i think it's a good idea to have at least one dark elf in your character slots i mean i know not everyone's like me you don't have all 18 character slots there with you know choices from everything you want to choose from but when you get to that point, if you decide to keep making characters, to buy character slots, that kind of thing, I think everyone needs a Dark Elf in their arsenal so you can kind of swap up and play different type roles without having to make a new character. The next thing we're going to talk about is the Nord. Now, the Nord has become one of the kind of fan favorites, I guess, for tanking. Of course, you get that uh, bonus to two-handed weapon use, duration effects from drinks, physical spell and frost resistance, ultimate gen, as well as base, health, and stamina. So you can see why everybody likes these characters as tanks. I also think they're very good as stamina characters, um, damage dealers, or tank-style characters in PvP. But don't be fooled, you can use them for other things. I have seen people use uh, magic-based characters and be a Nord. So, you know, like a, a Sork, for example, or a Necro. You do get that ultimate generation as well as that physical spell and frost resistance. So you could build a bit of a more healthy-style damage-dealing magic character, even with a Nord. So... Don't just think because a lot of people say a Nord's a tank or a Nord's a PvP kind of damage character. That's not necessarily has to be the case. While they are very good at those two things, you can do a lot of other things with the Nord as well. When it comes to the Aragonians, you're looking at a bonus to healing done, restoration staffs, disease resistance, resource gain from consuming po uh, po uh, potions, I about said poisons, excuse me, swimming speed, as well as base health and magic. I have used Aragonians for magic damage dealers in PvE and PvP. I have used Aragonians as healers, and I have used Aragonians as tanks, and I think they perform very well in all of those categories. Now, when it comes to damage dealing with a magic-based Aragonian character, no, you're not going to get as much as a High Elf, a Dark Elf, a Breton, but I still think they're very good at uh, magic damage dealing, but they really stand out, in my opinion, in the tanking department and the healing department. Maybe not as much as they used to in the tanking department. I think the Nord has definitely kind of gone above the Aragonian. And even one other class we're going to get into here in just a second. But you can still do a lot of things with an Aragonian. So if you've never had an Aragonian character, they have a lot of bonuses with what you get. You know, that healing done, that restoration staff, like I said, could be used for a healer. That disease resistance is great in difficult things or, you know, difficult uh, kind of activities where something you may be fighting has disease stuff you know, hitting you or out on the ground or whatever the case may be, like some kind of AOE, this disease. Aragonians are very good for that. My Aragonian tank could take a lot of damage from stuff that other characters could not. So just keep that in mind when making a, a character. Aragonian is a very good character not to really look over. They can do a lot of things as well, a lot of different classes as well. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about, of course, is the High Elf. Now, this is one that I use a lot on different classes. Personally, I love magic classes, and I usually always go with a high elf when I make a magic class. I have a couple Breton magic classes, but majority of my magic classes are high elves because of the reason if you're going to make a magic class and you want to deal massive damage, high elf is the way to go. Of course, you get spell damage, resource recovery, base magic, experience gain, and this makes them very powerful spell casters, as it says. So you can make anything that's magic-based with this class 
and do very well with it. Now, keep in mind, high elves have always had an issue, in my opinion, kind of with resource kind of sustain, especially if you make a Sork. Uh, Sork high elf is my original character, but at the same time, it is a difficult character to learn because of that resource kind of, you know, recovery. So just keep that in mind. You can make some other magic classes like Knight Blades, like Templars with High Elves, and keep your resources up a lot better than you can with a Sorcerer. But if you just want to deal straight out raw damage, a High Elf is the way to go when, you come to a, when it comes to a magic class. I do think they also make very good healers. You also could even go with a High Elf tank if you wanted. But healers and damage, magic damage dealers are where High Elves really shine. Now, when it comes to the next class, which is the Wood Elf, you don't see a lot of people using Wood Elves, in my opinion, on, on PS4 anyway. I don't see a lot of Wood Elves running around. I have a Wood Elf Warden that is a stamina solo kind of character I use, and I really enjoy using the Wood Elf. They have improved archery, base stamina, stamina recovery, stealth detection, movement speed, reduced fall damage, poison resistance. Uh, these are pretty well-rounded characters. They're good for PvE. They're good for PvP. I have used mine in vet dungeons before running a dual uh, bow build. Now, that may not be the best stamina damage dealer out there, of course, but I still think it is very enjoyable and very viable as well. So just keep in mind, if you're wanting to make something like a Wood Elf, you wanted something a little bit off meta, uh, kind of in that stamina department, I think the Wood Elf is a good choice. Like I said, I really enjoy mine for solo play. I pretty much can run around and do anything. I can even solo a few vet dungeons with it. Uh, solo world bosses, that kind of thing. I think the Wood Elf, as a, a stamina-style solo character, is a very good choice. And I know a lot of people out there don't get into in-game veteran dungeons, in-game just normal or veteran trials. While I highly recommend that you do, if you don't, that's perfectly fine if you just want to play solo. I can understand that. I do recommend you try these things. I know a lot of people are kind of scared that they're not going to be able to do what they need to do in those certain situations and they're going to get you know disappoint whoever they're playing with. Don't worry about that. Everybody screws up. I still screw up from day to day playing. So d don't be concerned with that. But if you're wanting just a straight up solo style character and that's what you're wanting to play, I think a Wood Elf is a very good choice for that. I think a Wood Elf can also make a good tank. Uh, you can do a lot of things with it, but a, a Warden Wood Elf is a lot of fun. You can even go in the Stamina Necro department. You could even make a farming character out of this because of the speed bonuses that a Wood Elf gets. And speaking of farming characters, the Khajiit. Now, I use my Khajiit for a farming character, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. But you have bonuses to pickpocketing, stealth, resource, recovery, as well as base, uh, base health, magic, stamina. This is kind of another character like the Dark Elf. It is a well-rounded jack-of-all-trades. You can use this as a magic damage dealer. You can use this as a stamage, uh, stamina damage dealer. You can even use this as a tank, a healer. You can use a Khajiit, kind of like the Dark Elf, as anything you want in-game. Now, when I made my Khajiit, this was the second character I ever made. I made a Stamina uh, Knight Blade. That is when Khajiits were top in DPS. They've kind of slipped down the list a little bit, but I still think they're very good in group DPS. I think they're very good in PvP DPS. I think they're very good solo characters if you want to use them as that. I have turned my Khajiit Knight Blade into a farming character. Uh, with some new things that are added into the game, like the Ring of the Wild Hunt, which gives you speed bonuses, the speed bonus that you can get from one of the passes, of course, in the Vampire skill line. I can go out and farm resources very quickly with my Khajiit character. I also can go out and farm uh, motifs, go out and farm furniture recipes from stealing and pickpocketing because of the passives that you get with this character and some of the other things that you can add to it gear-wise. Makes them very good farming characters, but also don't sleep on the idea of old oh, Khajiit's aren't really that good. You might hear some people say that. I still think they're a very good stamina damage dealing class or magic for that matter. Or like I said, even a tank. So the Khajiit can do a lot of things like the Dark Elf. So it's never a bad choice to go with the Khajiit. You may not be able to do as much damage as some other classes or races, but I will go ahead and tell you, you're not going to be far off with the Khajiit character. And they're just very cool looking in my opinion. And last but not least, we have the Imperial. Now, of course, this is one that you have to purchase. If you just have the base game, you may not have access to the Imperial race, so just keep that in mind. But this is a class that gives you uh, bonuses to gold drop rates, shield proficiency, base health and stamina, and resource recovery when fighting back. I think Imperials have really gone up the list in tanking, in my opinion. I think they're one of the best tanks in game. A lot of people are going to say a Nord, a lot of people are going to say an Aragonian or even an Orc. 
I think the Imperial race is top notch when it comes to tanking. I also think the Imperial race is top notch when it comes to stamina, DPS, and PvP. If you want to go in, make a stamina based character to play PvP with, I don't think you can go wrong with an Imperial. Now, while you could use an Imperial for other classes as well, I think tanking and stamina, DPS, and PvP, and tanking, even tanking in PvP if you want to do that, but tanking in PvE is one place they really shine. Now, a lot of people don't really make Imperial classes, in my opinion. I don't see a lot of people own Imperial kind of races uh, and, and, you know, class builds. But I'll go ahead and tell you, you can't go wrong with an Imperial uh, DK tank or an Imperial, uh, even a uh, Imperial Necro tank, if you want to go with something besides a, the normal Nord, Aragonian, Orc, that kind of thing, an Imperial Nightblade tank. Try them out. They're a lot of fun, in my opinion. Anyway, guys, I hope this kind of give you an idea of what you can use each of these classes for, or each of these races for with particular classes. hope this also gave you an idea of some things you can do that are not particularly, like I said, the meta idea of the best race for every class. There's a lot of things you can do in-game that don't necessarily have to be revolving around the best in everything. Like I said, you can just enjoy the game. You can make any race, any class, anything that you want, and that is why, like I said at the start, uh, Elder Scrolls Online is a lot of fun because of those options that you have. Anyway, guys, leave me a comment. Let me know what races you're running on your classes, and of course, if you liked it, hit the like. If you hadn't subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon up in the top right corner. That way you know when all my videos go live. In case uh, you have not uh, heard about the sponsor here on the channel or the affiliate, that is GT Racing. They sell gaming chairs, office chairs, desks, keyboards, mice, that kind of thing. Anything pretty much for your gaming needs. I've used one of their chairs for over a year now. I really like it, and they're very good price. So if you want to check those, uh, those great folks out over at GT Racing, all their information is linked down in the description. And if you have a chance to share the video, please do. It does help out the channel a lot. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.